guys, this is Judy from Patterns for Pirates, and I'm going to do a short little video on single fold bias. So this is pre-made, purchased single fold bias. I have half an inch. It's just folded under on the top and the bottom. And I'm just going to have one long strip that I know is longer than what I need. And I just cut a scrap, and I'm going to sew it together and pretend like this little curve is a neckline. So I'll stitch that into a circle, just like a neckline would be. That teeny tiny pretend neckline. The first thing I'm going to do is stay stitch. Um, a stay stitch is really important especially on a looser weave fabric, so something like linen, um, any kind of gauze. And what you want to do is a shorter straight stitch. And you want it inside your first seam allowance. Your first seam allowance on pre-bought like this is only going to be a quarter of an inch. So under a quarter of an inch on this first stitch. It does take a while on an adult neckline, but very worth it. I will add a couple pictures. I will add a couple pictures to um, really promote stay stitching and pressing. I um, did armholes one pressing one not pressing, one with stay stitch, not, one with not stay stitch, and you can see a major difference. So first is a stay stitch. This helps stabilize your fabric so now my neckline or my armhole or whatever I'm finishing is not going to stretch out. Even though it's so woven, it will stretch out along the bias, so along those curves it will stretch out. Okay, to start I'm going to unfold my top and then I'm going to fold it in half an inch. And you can either press this with your iron or give it a really good finger press. And I'm going to align that fold to my center back seam. Okay, and I'm doing it right sides together. I'm going to fold the bias towards the inside of the shirt where it will not be seen. I really like that when I'm using pre-made bias because chances are it doesn't match your garment perfectly. If you're lucky and it matches your garment perfectly, you could always fold it to the right side if you wanted to trim, but most of the time I'm using pre-bought bias. I want to hide it because it's not a perfect match. So I'm continuing unfolding that top fold and stitching directly on that fold line. It's about a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. You want your bias tape to be one to one or meaning um, not pulling, but not easing. Exactly the same as your neckline, armhole, whatever you are finishing. You want it to be exactly the same as um, your, where it hits your seam allowance. So you heard me trim, and I will show you exactly where I trimmed it. I went all the way around, and that first that first fold and when I got back to my folded here is my very first one where I folded it and aligned it to the center seam I went all the way past the fold to the raw edges so there is three layers right there the very beginning Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press everything up. 
So I'm going to press so tiny my um, binding up like this. I'm also going to press my seam allowance up. Now I highly, highly, highly recommend doing this with your iron. Um, I'm not just because I don't want the video to go too long, but I never, ever, ever don't use my iron on a real garment. Use that iron. You'll be sorry if you don't. Now what I like to do just on the very drastic curves, so on an armhole it's the bottom right here, on a neckline it's the bottom right here, sometimes along the back if it's got a, a pretty big curve on the back. On my little fake neckline, I just put a curve on the front. So what I'm going to do is take some snips or embroidery scissors and I'm going to clip along the curve through my stay stitch, through my bias tape, just that seam allowance. So I'm not clipping this part that we haven't sewn yet. I'm only clipping that very top fold that's within that seam allowance. This will help it fold down nice and neatly along that curve. Okay, now again, I highly, highly, highly recommend using your iron. I'm only not because this is not a real garment and because I don't want the video to go on forever and always. Now what we're going to do is fold the bias binding down towards the inside and throw in a few pins. I like to pin from the right side because I like to sew from the right side. It's really important to make sure that you put a pin in every so often because we are going to be stretching this bias to fit a larger part of the garment now. Since it's on a curve, we stitched it without stretching it, without easing it the first time. Now we're folding it down to a larger part and we're going to need that slight stretch the bias has to fit the larger part of the garment now. I like to fold my bias binding where you can see a tiny sliver, tiny, tiny sliver of the main fabric on the inside. That just gives me a little peace of mind that you're not going to see the bias when I'm moving around. It's not going to peek out. Okay. Once again, I like to sew with my, the main fabric up, but if you would rather sew it with the inside up so that you know you're getting your seam allowance perfect, that's fine. My single fold bias was half an inch, so that's the seam allowance I'm going to be sewing with. I like sewing from the right side because I like to make sure there's no wrinkles or peppers along my neckline. Which is very easy to do with single fold bias because again you're folding it down to a larger part a deeper seam allowance so easy to get a pecker or a gather doing that. Pressing of course helps make sure you don't have any wrinkles. Sometimes it's not really a gather or a pecker from stretching it's just a wrinkle that you didn't press out that is permanently there now because you have stitched along that wrinkle. So don't don't do that to yourself. Make sure you make friends with your iron and give it a really good press before you stitch. Okay. And let me trim a couple of these. Oh, see, now I got a little wrinkle in there because I didn't press, and now you can see. I would be so unhappy if that was my neckline. See that little wrinkle? I didn't press my fabric, and I permanently sewed that wrinkle in there. Okay, so from the wrong side, 
you can see a little sliver of my main fabric there at the top and then my stitch line is just along the edge of the bias tape. From the right side of the garment you can just see that stitch line that we just did. Now you would take it to your iron again, give it one nice final press and you would have a gorgeously finished both on the inside and the outside neckline or armhole. There you go. Alright guys, good luck!